Today we got new images of the soon-to-be-released Sony ZV E10, and I could not believe it. It leaked on a huge channel too, what? What's up guys, if you're new here, my name is Paul and I run a channel that inspires other creators that the, your future is whatever you make it. I do that through gear reviews and tutorials. And today we're going over some leaked footage uh, or leaked images, I should say, of this new Sony ZV E10. And uh, it looks to be a very interesting camera. I'm not gonna probably buy it myself. It's APS-C and I'm a full frame guru with uh, my A7S III and this A7C, but what is very interesting is just the direction that Sony is kind of going, trying to get these vloggers, which, I mean, they've been trying to get vloggers for years, and they're finally coming out with the cameras that they probably should have made. But th check out these images here on the screen. You will see the leaked images of this new camera. Now, I'm going to kind of go over some of the things that I see through this camera, and we're going to kind of discuss that here today. Please consider subscribing. I post Sony content all the time, whether it be some reviews, when my A7S III, my A7C. I'm going to be doing comparisons of the Sony colors of the A7S III, A7C, and other various Sony things. So if you like that kind of content, hit that subscribe button. What is interesting, I want to break down the body of this. And as you can see, this, this picture's on the screen. It looks to be like a married version of like a small Sony A5500, A7C, and the ZV-1. Now, you can clearly see they took the same record button that they've been putting on all these Sony new Sony cameras with the red circle, uh, but it looks very similar to the one that you find on the ZV-1. And really, this the top of this kind of looks like that. What's very interesting is they took the little power button from the FX3, and it's now it looks like you got an on and off switch versus having you know this little twisty thing around the shutter button that turns it on and off. And what it looks like is they're gonna be doing the same sort of thing they did with the FX3 and having that as kind of like a, a rocker dial that you can zoom with, which is kind of interesting. I guess you could use it for that digital zoom, which would make it kind of like a point and shoot camera, but then you got your interchangeable lenses that you can have on there. It's kind of cool. And then you can clearly see that there's another knob that like changes between the different modes, your photo mode, your video mode, and your SNQ mode. And then you have one custom button. It looks like that button is like the portrait mode or the product showcase mode where you kind of like lift something in front of the camera, you know, and it focuses on it and then you bring it back down and you know, it, it's clear, as long as you put it in front, like right now with this camera, it's tracking my face. So no matter if I put this over here, 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 put it up here, it's still focusing on my eye and I can see that in the box. I actually have to put this over my face to make it kind of focus on this and block out my face and then it switches back. Where this product showcase mode, just like the ZV-1, you just throw your product up there, it tracks it and then you put it down and it, it knows smart AI these days. And then it looks kind of like there's maybe a microphone on top like the ZV-1, but it, I don't know, it kind of looks like a plate too, so it'll be hit or miss whether they have that kind of the good built-in microphone. You notice the hot shoe is off to the side where normally the EVFs would be on these small portable cameras because there is no EVF. Big shocker there, we, we knew that one was coming. I like the positioning of those, that hot shoe. It's way better than in the middle, which is kind of funny now because the screen also will flip out to the side on that, so it didn't make as big of a deal with the you know 6000 series cameras where they had the flippy uppy screen and they put this right in the middle. What they're thinking there, but um, this one's gonna have a flip out screen just like all of Sony's cameras have been having recently, which is awesome. Um, the interesting thing will be what are the menu systems gonna look like because I haven't seen any pictures of those. Will it have the new menus? Will it have the old menus? We don't really know. And it also has like a little dial on the top, so that could be like your shutter dial or your aperture dial, whatever you assign that to, I'm sure. Uh, it's probably gonna be set to aperture, I would assume, out of the box, but. If you look at the back of the camera, it looks like your, your typical Sony a7C or APS-C camera, um, you kind of, I would imagine replacing that AE on button that's on the back of the A7C with your menu button and then everything else, function, your dial with 
the push button in the middle, trash can button, which I'm sure could also be maybe your custom button too, because it looks like there's only that one custom button on the top, but it's also another mode they assign. But that's what I love about Sony cameras. At the end of the day, you would pretty much have freedom to, to assign the, any of these buttons to do whatever you want it to do, so that's cool. But uh, and, and so the back is pretty basic like that. That's to be expected. Um, what, what is also interesting, if you look at this other picture, the side, it looks like there's just one gigantic door on the side. So I'm very curious to see what kind of ports they have. It's rumored to have a USB-C that also powers a camera so you can have it for streaming and also has that you know imaging edge software just like the ZV-1 and a lot of the other newer Sony cameras where you can just plug it in and use it as a webcam without anything else just through USB which is a nice addition of course and I think that's going to be one of the big markets for this camera is in the streaming front. For those YouTubers that want to leave a camera in their studio that is it has interchangeable lenses because I mean I don't know I just I can't see another big like awe for this camera. As far as specs go you know you're gonna have 24 frames per second. It says up to 100 on the rumor site but I'm, I'm gonna guess that that's maybe like the European way. I, I bet you it probably will have 120 frames per second. It seems like it's gonna have all of the functionality of like an A6400 camera because this also does not have IBIS. Um, and, but the a very interesting thing that they did, and this is why it's like, are they gonna, is the is A6400 still gonna be a camera that you would consider after this comes out? Because it, if you notice the pictures, it has a bigger grip. It almost has like this slightly bigger grip, just like the A7C does. And they look, look like they were able to jam in that new NPF Z100 battery, which, is a fantastic battery, and that would take away all the gripes that anybody has ever had about it, a Sony APS-C camera other than the A6600 that have all had those smaller batteries, and the ZV-1 that has those batteries that don't last long. This camera will have a battery that can last throughout the day easily. I love these batteries. They're not crazy big, but they provide a lot of punch, and I can, I can shoot a whole day with my a7s3 and that battery and be fine i do the same thing with my sony a7c and i love that sony is starting to figure out a way to bring that battery back into the system and have one battery for all their cameras because i i personally love it i got a lot of batteries i got you know, a number of sony cameras so it's great to be able to have one battery for all your your, your cameras and that's really about it i think the other, other notable mention is they did learn from their stupid mistakes with the zv1 and they put their tripod screw thread on the bottom in the middle of the camera the door doesn't look like it's getting in the way at all so Good job, Sony, for figuring that one out again. This camera looks very interesting. Who do I think this camera is gonna be for? I, th I think it's gonna be for the entry. This will be a great entry-level camera. The price is supposed to be about $899, and I think it'll be great for anybody new to shooting or they want a vlog camera that's not the point-and-shoot ZV-1, which I still think the ZV-1 is probably the best vlog camera out, even if that came out just for the fact it's so small you can throw it in your pocket and I don't know. I don't have one, but I've been super tempted and then it would be awesome to have like an overhead camera, but I digress. It's gonna pretty much just wipe out the need to have the A6400 and I would even be pushing people to that over the 6100, but we still have that very cheaper, cheaper option by a little. Um, still, but I, I think it's gonna be the new budget camera. Coming in at $899, you really can't go wrong. It's gonna come with, have a kit lens option that's 16 to 55, but honestly, if it was me, I would be buying that camera and the, ta the new Tamron 11 to 20. Man, that lens looks amazing. And that's like the perfect APS-C vlogging lens. I think I can get away with most stuff with just that. Kudos to Sony for making this I guess it's more for the budget filmmaker and they're they're keeping up with the providing a small body camera for those people who want portability and those vloggers. 
But uh, thanks for watching. If I find out more information, the camera is supposed to be announced July 7th, so it's not that far off. So stay tuned. Um, we'll, we'll keep you updated on here with all Sony stuff because I'm a Sony fanboy, of course. And uh, do all the fun YouTube things down below, and you know that I will see you in the future. Bye.